I've had this thing for years and it's fine, but I have to fight it. So it's time for an upgrade. Here, I'll show you what I mean. These things just don't come out very easily. We're gonna build an apothecary cabinet. So it's gonna be a bunch of drawers uh, to hold all the screws and doohickeys and thingamajigs around, around the shop. I had some extra Baltic birch laying around, which is nice. I'm um, a pretty big deal. All right, I've cut my box pieces out, but I wanna be able to slide the back down a dado on the back for when I fashion it all together. That'll look nice and it will save on weight by putting um, just a thin piece back there. The way I like to do that is first kind of draw out where I want it. Now, in order to cut a quarter inch dado to the size of my backer board. I'll show you how I do that. First, I utilize some setup blocks. These are brass, uh, they work great. So this is my quarter inch one. And I set this up, make sure that my teeth are at the, the height that I need. And then I put another one on top. So this is just the 3 8 inch one, but I put this up on top. That's perfectly lined up with the teeth. If I raise it up anymore, you'll see it start to raise up that top piece and you'll be able to see day daylight through there. So that's how I know with the top piece on there, that's how I line it up. So I know this is exactly a quarter inch. All right, so this is the backer board I'm gonna be using. It's quarter inch MDF. It works great for backer boards, super sturdy. It's gonna work well for a thin piece that I can slide down those dados. So how I line this up to be exactly a quarter inch, I could put in a quarter inch dado the hard way, but that's a lot of monkey business for just a few cuts in the table saw. As we all know, it's total pain in the butt. Let's the hard way in an efficient way. Let's do things the hard way, multiple cuts, things that take longer. Let's get efficient. We're gonna do it the hard way. Uh, whatever you get it, but I'll show you a fast way that I can make the first and the second cut and then we clean up in the in the middle and that'll make a perfect dado for this to slide in securely We'll be on our way without ever having to change out the blade we'll run all the pieces through first up to that line there and We're gonna also run through a test board. So here's what that'll look like All right, so this is the test board, as you can tell. Just grabbed a piece of scrap, and that obviously is not going to fit. It's an eighth inch kerf, so that's not gonna fit the quarter inch backer board that I want to be able to slide in to those pieces. But what I do now is I keep tapping the blade over just ever so slightly, cutting another one and another one until I get just enough and I keep test fitting it on that backer board until it fits. Once it fits exactly, if just from little taps on the fence, that's when I stop and that will tell me exactly where to end all my cuts. I keep the fence where it is. I run all the other pieces through to get that second pass and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. So I was kind of rushing through that, I think just for the viewership at home. That fits okay. I'd rather have it fit super tight on there. I mean, this still stays. That's a good dado, but there's just a slight gap. So what I'm gonna do is just barely breathe on that fence to bring it back this way and then run all my production pieces through it. Now what that will look like with the first cut you made and then the second cut you made there's obviously that gap in the center there. So now that we've got all our pieces with these first and last cut made, now we just have to adjust the saw to chew up that, that center pass. These should be good to go. All right, so we've got the center cleaned up on there. Very nice. This is a flat tooth grind saw on there as opposed to if you have an alternating tooth bevel, you'll see this kind of look like a W down here, and then you just need to clean that up elsewhere, or if you don't mind, then just glue it up as is. But this is all flat on the bottom, uh, which is exactly why I bought that saw blade. So moment of truth. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Obviously, I'm not, this is just my test board, but 
That's going to be a great dado. And so now I will cut that backer board to size and obviously cut off this uh, ugly corner. Well, I can't believe I did that. When I was too focused on cutting off this bent up corner, I cut this piece down to the width, not the length. And now the stupid thing is too short. So I'm gonna make the back into two pieces. Uh, I'll slide the backer board in and then put another piece that slides on top of that. Not ideal, but it beats taking a trip to Home Depot. Okay, let's dry fit these and I'll show you what I mean. So, this one will fit in like that. Now for the piece that I didn't properly cut. I want four boxes across each of the rows, and then I need to figure out how many are going to fit up and down to, and that will give me my dimensions for the cross beams for, for these drawers, and then exactly what those dimensions are. So if you've ever seen one of these things, one of these dividing calipers, it's pretty slick. So if you're trying to divide it into four spaces like I am, I would just use the first five, one on each end, and then the spaces are what you wanna measure. So one, two, three, four. However far I divide these, it will maintain an equal distance between each of these points. I can figure out exactly how many would fit in there. It looks like one, two, three, four, five. So I have decided to, you know, that monkey business we talked about with the dado blades. I am going to put the dado stack into the table saw. And in order to get everything to line up just perfectly, I'm going to run dados all along my side pieces and my top pieces. So I traced out where they need to go. And you can't set me up like that. I don't know how to transition yet. I'm trying to edit this thing. That was so unbelievably satisfying, that, that thing right there. The tolerances were on fleek. Is, is that right? Can I say that? Everything just slid in really nicely, and it's time to make some drawers. So we're going to use some butt joints, make a prototype, make sure everything fits right. Then we'll run them in batch and uh, make the rest of them. So let's get going.
This is my first time using the Wagner spray gun with lacquer. I thinned it down a little bit with lacquer thinner and you know tweaked the, the air settings a little bit on a test board. It ended up working really nicely. Uh, I probably would have gone through about four or five of the rattle cans for this project. So it actually saved me a bunch of money. I had some lacquer on hand and I thinned it out and added it to this Wagner and it, it worked great, sprayed great. I look forward to using that again in the future for clear coating. I bought these pretty stylish label holders slash handles for these things. I think it goes with the whole style. And um, for quick repeatable drills, I built myself a little drill guide out of a piece of scrap. Um, centered up the holes on that piece of scrap to exactly where I would need it. And then I just positioned it against the face of each one of these drawers and made quick work of drilling and then screwing in these handles.